Welcome back, everyone. In the age of technology and busy schedules, online dating is not so taboo anymore. Should you be more comfortable looking for your next date online? We've assembled a great panel to discuss this topic. LaDawn Black, relationship expert and host of the radio program, The Love Zone. Ron Worthy, Vice President of Production and Business Services for People Media, which runs blackpeoplemeet.com, the largest black dating site for black singles, and Zena Phillips, who formerly was an online dater. We'll get to that in just a moment. Folks, welcome. Greatly appreciate it. All right, Zena, let me start with you. Let me pick on you first. Absolutely. Now, they told me that it's former. You don't do it any longer. Is that because you found the love of your life online, or it was just not for you? I think that, you know, I think it started, I didn't find the love of my life. The person that I met was not online, but I think it just changed my purpose. You know, the things that I wanted to do kind of changed my priorities. Mm -hmm. At the time, I was working a lot, so the online dating was very effective and very helpful. But now, how much hesitation, if at all, did you have before you actually put up a profile and really jumped in the water? None, because I, was, I started out more from curiosity. I had heard about so many people who had met people and... You know, after four months, they were engaged, and the, the relationship seemed really healthy, and, and they were excited, and so I was curious. Mm -hmm. Now, Ron, talk to me about, uh, A, the um, increase, I suspect, in traffic you've seen over the years, and the feedback that you can give us in terms of just pure data. Absolutely. I think, uh, I mean, online dating has been around for a while. I mean, it, it's a holdover from the old days of classifieds where you may have had a lot of negative baggage, and I think that uh, with the advent of Internet, you know, in the early days, it was more mainstream focus, and I think now the, the biggest growth area is in the targeted niche space, because people are looking for uh, a safe, uh, effective environment where they can find people who are also looking for people like themselves. What areas. does your company do to safeguard some of that? I mean, uh, you know, the profile, you put up a picture, and then you meet him or her, and that may or may not look like that picture. I tell you that I make $250,000, and oops, zero in the wrong place, I make $25,000. How much can you safeguard what's online? Well, you know, the reality is that we provide a, a myriad of, of options on the back end and the front end for the user to, you know, make sure they have the safest uh, experience possible. But just like anything else, it's buyer beware, right? You know, you go out and you have to exercise caution and make sure that, you know, you meet maybe with a, in a coffee house for an initial date with, you know, make sure you, you let people know, just like you would if you met someone in the supermarket and you just, you know, just happen to meet them and you didn't have any information about them. So, yeah, we have a, a full staff that, you know, make sure that we uh, monitor all of the, you know, communications and make sure that if people have any complaints about a particular user that we address that immediately. So we certainly address that. Now, LaDawn, you've written books and, and blogs about relationships over the years. You host a very popular radio program in the Baltimore area. But talk to me about uh, this whole idea of Internet dating. There is a generation, mine, uh, gray-haired folk, gotcha. who really had looked at this for a long time and said, uh, you know, that's for weirdos. You don't, you, don't, you, know, you don't go that route. But now it is far more common. Talk to me about what your listeners and your readers have been saying. It's really interesting because my listener base is 25 to 54, so I have people who say, no, that's something I'll never do. And then I have people who say, you know, this is something I'll do every day. I think it really has changed because people are tired of clubs. They're tired of waiting for that random person to meet them at the grocery store. They really want to take charge of their dating, and online dating sites allow you to do that. You can really say, I want this certain height. I want this certain income level. I want this certain you know, intellectual level. You can really drill it down and get that ideal person for you. Now, do, do you find that there is uh, this want, particularly for, for women, we're not as discriminating <laughs> as we go out there on the market, but for women, there is this sense, and you always hear the complaint, I can't find, I can't find, I can't find a good black man, blah, 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 blah. Um, that they see this as a wider net, casting a wider net on the internet. Absolutely. I mean, you know, for, you know, literally the, the cost of a cup of coffee every day, you know, compared to, you know, going out to dinner or a very expensive dates, especially in this economy, and you, you, you become a paid subscriber, you instantly have access to thousands of people right away. And so I think the thing the internet does for you and online dating specifically is within the inbox, you can continue to have conversations online with them until, you know, they have, you know, go over a threshold that you realize, hey, you know, maybe I want to meet this person, you know, in, in person. And we have enough tools either, you know, through our chat or, you know, through actually messaging people where you can actually get to that before you actually see them in person. But Don, what about the idea that I don't care what anybody says, there are stigmas for women that men don't have. 
And so uh, it seems to me that because you have this wider net, mm -hmm. you could conceivably go out with a lot more people through Internet dating right. than, than going to right. a club. How, how, how much of a stigma can that be for women if, you know, you've got, when you get home, 25, 30 right. men who are in your inbox, and you're like, well, I like 10 of these, you know, <laughs> 20. And, and, right. and there is that sense of, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> I understand what you're saying. You know, women, we do have that perception thing that we have to deal with, you know, seeing a lot of men and what that really says about us. But you have to see online dating as dating. And I think a lot of times we've forgotten about what dating truly is, and that is trying a lot of people out. It doesn't mean that you're sleeping with everyone that you try out. It means that we're having conversations. Mm -hmm. We're going out for that coffee. We're getting to know people, and then we're drilling it down. Mm -hmm. So if I come home at the end of the day and there are 25 messages in my inbox, I'm like, yay, yeah. it's a good day. <laughs> Let's have some conversations. That 25 will drop to 10, and then it'll drop to 5, and then it may drop to 2. But it's all about playing the numbers game, and I really think it's important for women to get into the game. You know, I know we're talking about the, like, the, the facts and fictions of online dating. I had a blast. And to be honest, you know, the Internet is a world of resources. You know, you have your Facebooks and all of these different re places that you can go to meet people socially and networking. And I will tell you, it is, does not just apply to women. It applies to men. And there is a stigma associated with men who are going into their 40s and are not married and don't have children. Mm -hmm. And because the women have a broader option and career-wise, money-wise, we're not settling these days. You know, so it's not just about us right. looking for men. It's about us looking for the quality of person that we want to date, whether we choose to make you a friend or a partner. Guys, thanks so much. Greatly appreciate it. Take a break here. Up next, she says knowing your body can save your life. We'll see how this woman saved her own in this week's Slice of Life. I'm able to show them in living color and proof Denise is standing here alive and well over 20 years. I'm a woman.